You've seen it in the movies, dudes holding the gun sideways and just blasting. There's plenty of discussion on how to shoot one-handed and what effect tilting the pistol has on how your hits show up downrange, but does any of that actually matter? I shot an IDPA match recently and had a low port that forced me to hold my gun rotated near 90 degrees. It got the old noggin jogging and am I really going to hit what I'm aiming at? Since this is a legitimate media enterprise, I tested it and did the work for you. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube dripping with that BDE. That's right, big dad energy. Bruce, I'm filming, what is it? If Deadpool is split half, would there be two? Okay, I'll see you later. Okay. So we're gonna take a look at canting the gun, and that means turning it, and seeing what effect that has on the hits. There's still plenty of discussion to be had on how the gun recovers from recoil in these various positions we can hold on it, but we're not solving that today. We're just gonna talk about when you hold the sights, kinda weird, how does that affect your hits down range? There's two terms I'll be using in this video if you're not familiar with them. There's point of aim, or POA, and point of impact, POI. So point of impact is where the bullet shows up on target, and POA is where you're holding these sights on the target and the POA POI should be roughly the same so if I'm holding center mass the hit should show up center mass if they show up high or low we'll know that something's off on the sights. So in order to test this, I was at the range, I had three targets and I had three guns of different sighting systems. Curious if the sighting system affects how the hits show up. So I had three guns from Bull Armory, oddly enough. The, the first is my competition gun, the Ultimate Racer. Picked this because the height over bore for the sight is very, very high, about as bad as it can get. So it's going to exaggerate whatever effect there is to report on. Second is the Bull Armory SAS-2 TAC-425. Not reviewed on the channel yet, so you'll have to subscribe and check back later for that one, but it's a pretty awesome gun. And finally, for iron sights, I had the Bull Axe Tomahawk, and that's basically kind of a duty-style striker-fired gun with very basic sights. So the process for testing, it was pretty simple. I had three targets set up, and I used the bay that was available at the gun club that day, and it was only good up to 20 yards. So I set fault lines at 5, 10, and 20 yards to see if the effect grew as you moved further and further down range, since pistol ranges generally are thought of to top out at 25 yards. 20 seemed like a pretty good point to stop at. So I started with the ultimate racer and I started shooting strong hand only with the gun canted at a 45 degree angle. Now the problem with shooting at a 45 degree angle is that you don't have the support hand to make the sins of trigger pull go away. So forgive my accuracy for not being quite dead nuts. The effect was still good enough and we were able to get usable data. So at five yards, as you can imagine, the height over bore of the optic and the mechanical offset played a bigger issue in where the hits showed up. So the hits showed up about an inch lower than where I was aiming, which is typical for my open gun. Backing up to 10 yards, there was basically no difference from my point of aim to the point of impact. It was very true at 10 yards, and backing up to 20, it was still the same, although the hits are a bit scattered because shooting with one hand, there's not as much stability. No real takeaways on the open gun with the frame mounted optic other than always account for your mechanical offset. Switching over to canting the gun 90 degrees, I got both hands on the gun again, and the result basically was the same. There was the height over bore issue to contend with at five yards, but it was hitting true point of aim to point of impact at every distance I shot it at. Switching over to the TAC 425, there's really not a lot to talk about on that one. The hits basically showed up since the height over bore issue is not quite is bad. The hits were a lot truer at five yards and then at 10 and 20 yards there was really no difference. Point of aim was there, got that, that's for mechanical offset. Point of aim was about here and I more or less got it at 20 yards. It's basically, that one was a hold, that was a bad hold, but the other two shots were held right there and the other one kind of came down. So exactly what I was going for. Putting the gun at 90 degrees basically just showed me that brass can land on my head when I shoot the gun tilted with the gun at 90 degrees. That was exciting. Other than that, there's no news to report. It was true point of aim, point of impact. Pretty boring. But iron sights is a little bit different. My sighting solution is not as good. This is the elevation I was holding at at 20 yards. I guess I just pushed the shot low. I was getting the elevation, but my sights were here and I was getting impacts high. I'll have to check the zero on that same thing. I was getting here and I was getting impacts high. So we're gonna... Okay, hold on, hold accuracy at five yards. That's three shots at five yards, so let's figure it out. 
Shooting the Axe Tomahawk, now I did notice something about shooting iron sights on the 45 and the 90. The 45 actually was the most difficult. At the five yard line, I was grouping like crap. My hits were all over the place, which was not what I was used to. It prompted me to have to shoot and test the zero of the sights to make sure that there wasn't an issue. Sure enough, when I held the gun straight up and down, I was stacking the shots hole on hole. Two went in the same hole and one was nearly touching. So I had a suspicion at five yards, but it started to confirm it at the 10 and 20 yard lines. Ultimately, there was no difference in the displacement of the shots other than I had a really hard time getting the gun to group. And the reason for that well, had nothing to do with the gun's mechanical accuracy or my technique as far as pulling a trigger was concerned. It had everything to do with how I was able to line up the sights. The iron sights are rectilinear, meaning a square notch with like three little rectangles standing up. So going for the equal height, equal light, it's much easier when they're on perpendicular to the earth, very straight up and down. When you put them on a 45, it becomes immediately harder to aim with them. So my side alignment actually was a little bit wonky when I was holding the gun like this. It was just more difficult to read good sights on it. I confirmed that when I shot on the 90 with both hands on the gun, there was basically no difference in where the shots showed up from where the sights were, but it was easier with the gun on the 90 than it was on the 45. 20 yards, getting a sight picture is more difficult. Uh, I ended up, I guess, misaligning the sights slightly high, so that's why they are, but that is the elevation I was holding, so they were centered. I just didn't have my notch. That was a bad trigger pull. I mean, that's that's two holes, that's one hole at 10 yards, it's perfect. At five yards, that's perfect. So I'm not saying don't shoot the gun on a 45 single-handed, I'm just saying that I personally have a harder time lining up the sights. So if I'm shooting one hand on the gun, I'm going to tilt the gun straight up and down. So knowing what the effect of holding the gun sideways is, and there really isn't an effect, what can you do with that information? Now I'll leave it to you, Mall Ninjas, to figure out what tactical application it is as you tell me that all the shooting competitions I do will get me killed in the streets. If only I watched all the right YouTube channels like you guys. As far as practical shooting, the sport of shooting pistols is concerned, hard leans, I don't see a point in trying to lean way out and get way, way out. If you can just kind of lean out like this, that's gonna be an easier way to get the gun out there and make the hits that you need to hit. Especially if you've got red dot sights, there's absolutely no problem turning the gun on a 90 degree cant, or if you're going down to a low port to get the gun to clear the bottom of the port if you're a tall guy shooting at a low port like myself. But also check out this video I did on recoil management. A lot of people have gotten a lot of help from it. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.